Right, let's create a paper. So I'll use a plane and we'll set this to one, 910 by 510. And we can add a texture to it. Let's make the color blue, because this is going to be a blue print. Drag it on there. And then we want the blueprint uh, texture. So I've created one already. Uh, we can go into our luminance, add white, and we need this to be punched out against the blue. So you can use your alpha when you're exporting in the texture. It's a rocket. And we can now drag that texture on top of there and we've got rocket. But if you notice the it's the wrong way around, so let's invert that. I'll go to alpha and press invert. Now you can see it now. Uh, also, the resolution isn't that great, so we can go to editor and change from default to 2048 by 2048. That way, you can see everything now. Now, we want to unfold this, so we're going to use a deformer called a bend deformer. And now you must drag the bend deformer underneath the plane to actually get it to work. Now, if I pull on strength, you'll see what it does. It tries to bend it. But it's not currently bending correctly because it needs to be set at the right angle. So we can do this. Okay. Let's see which way is this supposed to be rotated. Rotate that 90 degrees and then we can just fit to parent. Now that deformer has been snapped to the page. Uh, if I just pull on the strength all the way, oh, one little mistake here. If you notice the bottom side of this map uh, is duplicating that texture and I only want it on the top, not on the bottom. Easy enough to fix. You click on the tag and you set this to front. And now it's only on the front. Right, let's bend this. Now when I'm bending it, you noticing that it's all kind of folding over each other. Uh, quite easy to fix. We literally go and change this from uh, minus 90 to minus 91. Uh, now the page isn't intersecting each other, though it's not smooth, which is easy enough. We just go into our plane and we add some more segments to the width of the object. If you can't see the, the segments, you just change this to garage shading. And now you can see the segments. Now the next step would be to animate it. So I will have to animate this unfolding. So if you change this to world view and you rotate this back and forth, it's the X value that's changing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to animate the X value. Let's drop a keyframe there. And drop another keyframe. Another one. And another one. So on the first keyframe, we're going to have it pulled back a little bit. No, wait, no, sorry. On the second keyframe, we're having it pull back. It's drawing energy and it's going to shoot forward past the place. Uh, all the way to the end. Lock that down. There we go. So and it anticipates, shoots forward, follows through, and then lands there. Cool. Now the next thing is it doesn't it could just look a little bit more natural. So we can just play around with the angle of our V 
deformers fold. That looks so much nicer. Cool. Uh, we can push this a little bit further. Uh, so now we wanted this to be some form of pirate scroll. If I delete these and we wanted to punch some holes out on the page, we can do that. So I'm going to take a sphere and duplicate that sphere. Now these will be the holes that we're going to punch out of the page. Maybe cut one on the corner. Copy another one, another one. Okay. And for all these spheres to be treated like one object, we have to put it inside a connect object. You drag inside there and call it spheres. And now we're going to need a bool to cut out the spheres from the page itself. So the bool is there. And we're pulling the spheres into the bool. Let's just drag that, that bendy form over right now and come to that later and drag in the plane. And now you've cut out the spheres from the circle. Now the thing is, if you try to stick your bendy form in here, it's going to muck everything up. So you have to group this all as a null and place your bend deformer inside the group. Now you have some holes. Woo. The next step is maybe we wanted to give this a little bit more of a, a bumpy type of texture and we can do that by using a displacement deformer. We'll whack in that displacement reformer with it. And we can go into our shading and choose noise. And we can change up the noise to many different kinds of ones. It'd be worth it just experimenting. Let's just try a knocky. And we can use our global scale just to make that larger. And we can also affect our strength of our displacer. I change the height. So let's put that height nice and high. Let's go back into our shading and make that size a lot larger. Cool, now you've got a nice wobbly scroll. Problem is, now you've noticed the scroll kind of intersects over each, over each other where the displacer was. Uh, we can easily resolve that. We go into our bend deformer and we change that up to a much higher value so that the page pushes away from itself like that. Uh, now we can also add a little uh, scroll holder onto our scroll. So let's take that cylinder and just make it a little bit taller. Rotate that up. I kind of want it to match up with the scroll. And just make it a little bit thinner. Cool. Now, rather than me wanting to animate that whole entire pole, I can parent it to the bendy former, which is moving. So I'll show you a really cool way. It's very similar to the pick whip in After Effects. You go to your bendy former. Now it's your X value that's moving. So you right click it and you go to expressions and you say set driver. So this one will be the driver of that animation. And then you go to your cylinder and it was the X value that we're animating. So you right click it and we go to set driven relative. And now it's going to follow the bend deformer. Isn't that cool? I hope you learned something today. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. And by all means, add some comments. If there's something you want to learn, I am happy to address this in my next tutorial. Thank you.